Hello again and welcome back to our mini series on playing lead electric guitar in worship. If you haven't checked out the previous videos, I'd love to encourage you to do that as we're just building up from video to video. And in this video, we're going to be looking at playing with other instruments. Now, it is super important that not everybody is playing all the time, creating a big old mess of sound. You might have once had the privilege of seeing a group of school children playing the recorder all together. And you'll often find that because they're all playing the same thing, it can create quite a messy experience. However, if you compare that to the sound of an orchestra, where you've got instruments like the double bass, the tuba, the trombone, kind of playing stuff like low down, you've got other instruments playing bits higher up. Uh, it can create an incredibly rich feeling sound with each instrument taking its own role and taking its turn to play. Now, a key way I always think about this is in terms of sonic space. Now, by sonic space, I simply mean if you mapped out all the notes that are being played on kind of a, a map, you might have the bass and bass drum down here, low down, you might have some vocals in the middle and cymbals and guitars on the top. And it's in super important um, that no sonic, sonic space is neglected while also making sure that no part of it is overcrowded. Ensure that you are listening to anything that might occupy a similar sonic space to you. So for example, uh, as a guitar player, I don't want to play really low down with a really bassy sound all the time because I'm just going to get lost in what the bass player is doing and distract from that. And it's very key as a lead guitar player that I don't get lost in other instruments, but actually often at times I can cut through the mix and be heard. So it's very important to listen. Um, the key way of doing this is making sure you're listening to the other guitar player, whether that's an acoustic or rhythm electric guitar, because both they all occupy a very similar sonic space. Um, you want to make sure that you're maybe not playing the same thing. So, for example, if the rhythm guitar player is strumming open chords down here, I might play in I might pick inversions much higher up, like this. or even vice versa. But the point is the two parts complement each other and build up rather than clashing and stepping on each other's toes. This is both important in terms of the rhythm and the frequency that's uh, being played as well. And this is often key if somebody else is improvising or playing a part is really meant to be heard. So maybe uh, switch to the neck pickup of your guitar and play something simple and almost just kind of step out of the way, let that instrument uh, bring what it's trying to bring. Um, a similar thing comes to mind when you're playing with singers in your band. Uh, they occupy a very particular sonic space, especially when singing a melody. And as guitar players, if the singer or worship leader is singing a melody, we want to try and play something, a melody or chords or inversions that don't conflict with what they're doing. Because worship music is very much based on the lyrics and we want to try and put as much focus on that as we can. So it's really important not to distract from the melodies being sung. And in fact, in church music, there are very few times where a secondary melody is required if somebody is singing, but there are a few cases. And there are a few shortcuts to help you play with other instruments. The most important, as I mentioned before, is listening to what each instrument is doing. Uh, even practice this, even when listening during kind of your spare time, learn to hear how different instruments play different roles uh, so you know what they're likely to be doing when you come to play on a Sunday. Maybe ask yourself in your favourite song or album or playlist, where do the bass, drums, keys sit in, my, in your favourite songs? Where do the guitar sit? And also, feel free to ask people what they're doing. If you're playing with another guitar player, say, excuse me, what, what are you playing there? Um, not only will you have an understanding of what they're playing and how maybe best to complement them, you might even learn a new technique or chord voicing. It's a double win. You can in, and you can have that chat with um, lots of people, with many of the instruments. Um, so, for example, you want to try and work out which guitar player is going to be playing riffs. And as a lead guitar player, that often falls to you. But it's also to do the same with um, a keys player, uh, just because this means that, for example, in the intro of Reckless Love, as a guitar player, we could play that part, but also um, the keys player, it sounds brilliant on that part. The, the part that goes a little something like this. Mm. 
I'm sure you're familiar with it. But for example, the first time that's played as a lead guitar player, you might want to drop out and stay out of the way and let the keyboard player play it and take it. But as the song gets bigger, you might want to add to it and actually, yeah, just help build on that part by playing the same thing. So just to quickly summarize, try not to overcrowd a sonic space and play in a different part of the neck and play something a little bit different to what's already happening. But make sure you're still complementing what's already going on. And feel free to have conversations about what everybody is doing. It can save a lot of time and helps you play your parts with confidence and yeah, really bring and help add to the song. Thank you very much for joining me in this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one where we're gonna be talking about knowing what to play. See you there.